QC 3.0 is the new standard for chargers used by many companies. And therefore, we get lots of compatible power banks and wall chargers at a good price. They deliver up to 12 volts and later up to 20 volts. And the voltage can be adjusted. Sounds like ideal for a lab or mobile power supply. But unfortunately, the standard is proprietary. So let's hack it. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. The old USB chargers were able to deliver 5 volts and around 2 ampere maximum. The new QC chargers provide up to 12 volts and 2 ampere peak. And you can change the voltage on the fly. Sounds interesting. And dangerous. I do not want to charge my trusted old iPhone with 12 volts. I assume this would not be accepted as a warranty case by Apple. The new devices use the same USB plugs and you can easily mix them by accident. The only difference is that their lid is green. This is why the engineers had to think a little to make it fail safe. If you connect one of those new chargers to your old 5 volt smartphone, it still gets 5 volts. If you connect the charger to a new Android phone, it is charged at double the speed because the charger miraculously switches up to 12 volts. At least when your battery is nearly dead. Later on, it changes back to lower voltages. How is this done? USB connectors have four wires, ground, VCC and two data lines. These two data lines are called D plus and D minus and are not necessary for charging. This is why smart engineers had the idea to use these wires for signaling between the charger and the phone. This principle was invented by Apple a long time ago, if I'm correct. But only to change the charging current, not the voltage. Qualcomm later came up with the QC 2.0 standard. It had to be completely backwards compatible. Therefore, they had to design their standard around the already existing Apple devices which used signals on the two pins. With the old Apple devices, the charger signals its readiness to deliver more current and the device either takes or leaves the offer. This is a one-way communication from the charger to the smartphone. This was no problem because the voltage was always 5 volts and nothing can be destroyed by just offering more current. Completely different from the new standard where the charger easily can destroy the phone with an overvoltage. Here we need a two-way communication. And here it's how they solved it in QC 2.0. I draw the D plus voltage on the X axis and the D minus is on the Y axis. Here are the 5 volts limits. As with Apple, the signaling is done at different voltages. Because the standard is proprietary, we do not precisely know where the levels are. Trial and error were needed by various people to get this diagram. I base my work on Vince's blog. You find a link in the description. First of all, we look from the smartphone towards the charger. The smartphone assigns different voltages to these data wires to signal the charger its capabilities. Not the charger. So the communication direction is reversed compared to the Apple standard. A few possibilities exist. The first one is the smartphone does not apply any signals. This results in this point on our chart. No voltage on both data lines. This point is not used by QC chargers. I call it P0. The standard says that chargers have to connect the two data lines at this point. Important to know, if your voltage on D plus and D minus are exactly the same, the charger is in standard mode and delivers 5 volt as all legacy chargers. By the way, in reality, P0 is not always at 0 volts. For this wall charger and the QC connector of this power bank, the voltage was 2.7 volts, which signaled my iPad to charge full throttle at more than 2 ampere. 
But as said before, in this state both data lines are short-circuited and not used by the QC standard. As a first step, the smartphone assigns 0.6 volts to D+. I call this point P1. The charger senses this voltage and, after around 1.5 seconds, it opens the connection between the two wires. It is now in QC mode and allows different voltages on both data wires. This is how the charger signals the smartphone, I am QC ready. You see, it is a two-way communication and the smartphone now can demand whatever voltage it desires. It does that by staying on P1 or choose P2 or P4. If it assigns a particular voltage pair to the data lines, the charger reacts with a specific voltage, 5, 9, 12 or, if the charger permits, also 20 volts. That's all. The charger stays in QC mode till the smartphone signals P0 or the cable is disconnected. Then it closes the connection between the two data lines again and does no more react to QC commands. It behaves like an ordinary charger again. I use these two devices for my tests. A Blitzwolf wall charger with one QC and two normal ports and a 10,000 milliwatt hours power bank with one QC and one normal port. Both devices are sponsored by Blitzwolf. Thank you very much. Both devices deliver up to 2 ampere maximum at 12 volt on the QC port even if it's only rated at 1.5 ampere. I assume it will start to throttle if it gets too hot. I was able to draw the specified 1.5 ampere over a long time. The only difference between the two is that the power bank does not signal anything to the Apple devices on the normal port. So you have to plug the devices into the QC port if you want the full 2 ampere. You see, if you know how, it's quite easy. Now we have to find a simple way to create these voltages in this sequence. Vince used a standard Arduino and a resistor network. Because we never need 5 volts, I decided to use a 3.3 volts Pro Mini. Like that, I was able to reduce the resistors to only 4, connected to two Arduino pins. You can do the math yourself. If a pin is low or high, the signal is 0 or 3.3 volts. If the pin is defined as an input pin, the two resistors create 0 0.6 volts. So we have the three needed voltage levels, 0, 0.6 and 3.3 volts. Simple but powerful. Just a quick demonstration. I switched the oscilloscope to XY mode. Now we can see that we can reach all six points necessary for the QC standard. By the way, if I switched to the unsupported 20 volts, my two devices delivered 5 volts. Today I will not use QC 2.0 because the newer chargers offer QC 3.0, which is an extension of QC 2. It provides a variable voltage. If we look at our diagram, we see one point is still not used. The Qualcomm engineers use it for the so-called continuous mode. I name this point P3. If you switch to P3, the charger changes to QC3 mode. And if you quickly change between P3 and P2, the value of the output voltage is reduced by 0.2 volts. If you shortly go to P5 and back, the voltage increases by 0.2 volts. Simple. Be aware that you have to keep track of the voltage level because you only can go up or down. And because Vince wrote a small library, it's even simpler. We can select any voltage and the charger or the power bank will adjust immediately. One 0.2 volts step only takes 2 milliseconds. There are a few caveats, as usual. The datasheet says it will deliver 3.6 to 12 volts. This is not always true. Not for the charger, nor for the power bank. The fully charged power banks stopped at 4.4 volts, and the charger was no more accurate below 4.2 volts. 
The minimal voltage was also depending on the load. Without load it would not go as low as with a load. Because we use relative addressing, the voltage level is no more accurate if we lose steps. So test your device first and adjust the minimal voltage accordingly. It can be done in the library in the file qc3control.h. I entered 4400 millivolts as a minimum. Also do not expect exact voltage values. Definitely not good enough for a decent lab power supply. Such a device also should be able to deliver small voltages and be more accurate. This is why I added a variable linear regulator. I only had a small one in my lab, so it's only a proof of concept, but I think it's sufficient to show the point. For a power supply with maximum 10 volts, we usually would use a 12 volts fixed power supply. What happens if we draw one ampere at 5 volts? The voltage regulator has to destroy 7 watts, which heats it up and we have to add a decent heatsink. If we go a little further to 3 amperes and 1.5 volts, it would have to destroy 31.5 watts, which needs a huge heatsink, and even then it might be impossible because the linear regulator package might not be able to transfer the heat from the junction to the heatsink. What about if we use our QC 3.0 power supply? If I adjust the voltage level to about 2 volts above the output voltage to give the regulator enough headroom for regulation, we always get a maximum of 6 watts, which is much less. Which also means that we can use a smaller heatsink and also a smaller power supply because our QC chargers deliver more power on lower voltages. Cool. Of course, in addition to the LDO, we need a small sketch which measures the output voltage and changes the QC voltage accordingly. You could even measure the input voltage and adjust the charger even more precisely. This is what I have done here. I used an SMD version of the AMS1117 in standard configuration. The output voltage is adjusted with this potentiometer. The Arduino measures the output voltage with this voltage divider. As soon as the difference between the QC voltage and the output voltage is less than 2 volts, the sketch adjusts it. We even do not need an Arduino. We could also use an ATtiny for that purpose. Then of course you need an additional small 3.3 volt regulator to power the ATtiny. Of course for a real bench power supply we need a bigger voltage regulator. For example this one, which is capable of going to 0 volts and deliver 3 ampere across the whole range. It can also handle the 20 volts if we get such a charger in the future. Summarized, we learned how QC2 and QC3 works. We learned how the signaling is done using different voltage levels on the otherwise unused data wires. We also learned that Apple and QC standards can coexist and how. QC3 is just an extension of QC2 which adds a voltage up and down feature. The chargers and power banks can be used from about 4.4 to 12 volts. If you try to go below 4.4 volts on the power bank, you might lose steps and your voltage will no more be accurate. If we add a linear voltage regulator, we get a precise bench power supply with only a low heat dissipation. It can also be used with a power bank for mobile applications without changing anything. If you just want to play around with QC chargers, you can buy such a small module where you can switch to QC2 or QC3 standard and change voltages. But it can not be remote controlled of course. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.